Hi, I'm James Brundage with Start Automating, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can handle multiple parameter sets in PowerShell in the context of this example function called getProtocol. GetProtocol gives you the list of well-known protocols, and it parses a built-in Windows file to do this, but it also allows you to have some nicer parameters surrounding it, like the ability to give it a list of ports and the ability to get ports and protocols by a given name. Now, this is possible because it does what most PowerShell functions don't do at this point, which is uses parameter sets. And in fact, it uses three parameter sets, which is, well, three more than most. And it uses a few tricks that you should know trying to build multiple parameter set functions. So the first one is what I call the parameter set that wasn't there. And this is the way that you end up with a good default behavior. So in get protocol, I parse a big file and I then could output everything, but if I outputted everything, that wouldn't be the best user experience in all cases. But I still want it to be a user experience. And so I want a way to default to that. I want to know very cleanly inside of my code later on if I'm in the case where I'm defaulting all the parameters or if I'm defaulting just a couple of the parameters uh, or if I'm going to filter them later. And by using this parameter set that wasn't there trick, I can actually give a default parameter behavior. So even though there's no parameters in all, default parameter set name is all. I could give it a name parameter set and then mandatory parameters like this would start to prompt. But this nifty trick lets me not prompt users and still have mandatory parameters that can help me quickly and easily sort what's in my code. And what parameter sets do, in addition to allowing a good user experience, is they make you think through how you're going to build your function a lot more. You think through what pieces of information are required and how you might want to flow in and out of it. So the next thing that we do is the continuation of using inline help. If you have a comment above a parameter declaration, this will become comments for that particular parameter. And then we have the parameter attribute. And the parameter attribute is often only seen with just this mandatory and position and often value from pipeline. And it's not value from pipeline here for a very important reason. Protocol is a string. And overall, one should be very, very wary of making things value from pipeline that are strings or assignable to strings because, well, everything can assign to strings. It makes it very difficult to have second or third default behaviors. And since this has three parameter sets, using this from the pipeline would probably lead to trouble. The next thing to notice is this much longer and wordier thing, value from pipeline by property name. Eh, it's a mouthful, right? And value from pipeline by property name is one of my favorite things in PowerShell, not because it's hard to explain or a mouthful to say, but because it does really awesome stuff. What it does is it allows you to take any object that has a property that matches that and use it as the parameter. So you can actually use a lot of different objects that already have properties that you want to bind to, and just adding this attribute will make them just gel with your function and pipe right in. And the next thing to notice is the parameter set name. Um, and we've talked about the fact that we're using multiple parameter sets many times. This is the attribute that delineates that. And the alias below here gives it an alternate name. So value from pipeline by property name will look first for protocol and then for name or any other alias. And that's a really handy thing because if you have three or four similar objects, you can build a function that actually works with all of them. The other parameter set's pretty similar. It gets protocols for a port, and it has value from pipeline. And the reason it has it and this doesn't is kind of div, uh, a simple law. Uh, if you have the more complex type, make that one take value from pipeline because more simple types will coerce to the pipeline too easily, meaning that you're going to end up never being able to take that value from the pipeline and producing a nice experience for that richer type. 
and the richer a type you're dealing with in PowerShell, unfortunately, the trickier a user experience can be. The deeper that type goes, the more information that's nested within it, the harder a user's gonna have, time a user's gonna have working with it. So you wanna be producing nice, simple objects and be taking nice, simple objects in. And value from pipeline and value from pipeline by property name give you this path. The next two parameters are not in parameter sets, but they still use the inline help. And they're only TCP and only UDP. Inline help is really great to document your parameters, and it's a really great way to think through how they should work uh, all the way before you start. If you go through the process of making great comment-based help and making great parameter sets before you write any of the, your code, you're going to end up with a great PowerShell function. So I hope this helps, and I'll see you next video.